We had the best time doing the initial breakdown of the body language and behavior in this video, and we decided we'd revisit some of our favorite moments from it. What made you come out here at night? Um, I went to my mom's a late stage Alzheimer's patient. My dad's in the hospital. Um, my mom gets anxious when she does. I went to check on them and Maggie. Maggie's a dog lover and okay. she fools with the dogs. And I knew she'd gone to the kennel. I was at the house. I left the house and went to my mom's <clears throat> for just a little while. Tried to call her when I left. <coughs> Texted her, no response. Um, when I got back to the house, the house was obviously nobody was in there. So I figured they're still up here fooling around. Paul was, um, gonna be getting set up to plant our sunflower seeds got sprayed and died and he was refiguring to do to plant the sunflower seeds okay. so i came back up here and i drove up and saw <clears throat> and called <clears throat> greg what do you got yeah, this is the first time we see him touch his face, touches his nose. Look, we, you'll hear people say if a person touches their nose, they're lying. No, we, we're not those folks. What we're saying is look for a deviation in baseline and ask yourself why. It's a pertinent question and a hard question. What made you come out here at night? And he uses his left hand, touches his face. Suddenly, he does one of the most powerful male adapters that exist. I call it butterfly thighs. And if you ever want to see, men will flip their legs, their thighs in and out that way. Younger men do it a lot, and it has a lot of impact. So that's a big comforting move for a guy to do. All an adapter is is a way for you to release nervous energy. And if we do them enough, they become habitual. So if you don't know what yours are, the way you release nervous energy, ask someone next to you. Ask someone who knows you well, because they know what you do when you're releasing nervous energy. Maybe you pick your nails, flip your hair, do something like that. Then he starts to tell a long story that has no pertinence to anything we're talking about. And that is, I went to see my mama. My mama's sick. She's got dementia. My mom's a late stage Alzheimer's patient. My dad's in the hospital. Um, my mom gets anxious. And he goes on and 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 on. And he gives you the cookbook. We call that chaff and redirect because an aircraft drops chaff to hope a missile will follow it rather than the story. That's what he's doing. He's dropping lots of details, hoping you'll follow that. That's Odd usually, but again, my wife and son are lying 100 yards away, dead. Somebody murdered them. And I'm going to tell you about my mom's jello she had for lunch. Come on. And he's adapting like all hell with that issue, with his hands and with the other. He goes to that dog, dog lover. lover. Okay. She, she fools, fools with the dog. Dogs. Boom. One shoulder rises. We hadn't seen that yet. We see a single shoulder. We often associate that with discomfort in the information they're sharing. He does a pause. He does a down left, looks down left, which we associate with internal voice. And he does a head scratch. We associate all of those things with thinking, with giving yourself time to think. He doesn't say what he saw. I drove up and saw. Either with words or with body language or with tone. None of that. And called. I think the female law enforcement officer in the back senses it because watch her cross her abdomen in discomfort as he's telling that story. I bet if you went and talked to them, it'd say, this guy, day one, we thought he killed his wife. That's exactly what I think you'd see. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, there's a cascade of negative statements, victim statements, really. The parents are ill and anxious. Uh, Maggie's a dog lover, doesn't love him, loves the dogs. Uh, she falls with the dogs, that's negative, rather than going, she looks after those dogs so well. It's she falling with the dogs. Um, and he's texted her and there's no response. So she's not attentive to him. And then Paul uh, is associated with sunflowers dying. So again, not being able to, I mean, that will, more of this story will come out and maybe he's laying down this story early, but essentially everybody is inept. <laughs> Ultimately, parents are non-functioning. Mom's a late stage Alzheimer's patient. My dad's in the hospital. Uh, wife loves uh, animals. Maggie's a dog lover. Okay. She fools with the dogs. The messes around and doesn't answer the phone. I tried to call her when I left. <coughs> Texted her. No response. And Paul can't look after sunflowers. Our sunflower seeds got sprayed and died, and he was refiguring to do 
to plant the sunflower seeds. So really casting a, um, a bad light on the victims there and, and him being around people who can't look after themselves or the things that are important or him. That alone uh, is allowed <laughs> a loud flag. You can't have a loud flag, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's a loud flag. It's a loud, loud flag. Chase, what do you got on this one? This is detail overload. There's a few things I want you to notice as you go through the video again in just a second. Number one, the detail and the, the, the chronology of everything is loaded and piled high. But none of the details are about finding out who did this. There is no request to investigate the scene or talk about the word murder. It's the last word in the world that he wants to come out of his mouth at a moment like this. And the confirmation glances back and forth where he's checking that detective with every detail in this clip, especially just to make sure it, he's buying it are just a classic hallmark of deception. It's one of the things we look for when we see a lot of other behaviors and they're outside of baseline, like we're seeing here. And when he says, obviously, obviously nobody, nobody was, was in, in there, there, I think he's telling us it was obvious to him that nobody was going to be in that house. Then finally, we have something called severity softening and lack of detail. There's tons of minute perfect little details about the intricate process he's going through with these sunflower seeds. Our sunflower seeds got sprayed and died. Then, what's the detail on the crime scene? I drove up and saw and called. That's the difference between sunflower seeds versus dead family members here. Scott? After the question, you're right, Greg, he touches the middle part of his head there, the, the middle of his brow there. I haven't seen that yet, just other than, than rubbing his whole face. And then he does this really quick re request for approval. That's another one of Greg's things where your eyebrows go up as you're look, looking to get something okay, or you're asking a question, you need some information. His, his eyebrows go up, and he starts adapting, I guess, what you call that butterfly thing, Greg. And then he starts using his Kleenex as an adapter, which we talked about what happened early, uh, earlier. We talked about that was going to happen. A whole lot of movement in comparison to the baseline we've seen up at this point, up to this point, because he's been fairly still up till now. This is where it makes me think something would be up with this. Then he starts going down this list of stuff, and his voice is, uh -huh, and then this, uh -huh. it's, just, it's, just, it's just a list. I went to check on them and Maggie, and I knew she'd gone to the kennel. Tried to call her, texted her, no response. He's rehearsed this. He knew what he was going to say when he came into this. When this question came up, he's, he's got his list of things that happened and things that he was going to talk about. We see a couple of those little shoulder shrugs, a single shoulder shrug here and a single one there and then a full one there. But the thing is with shoulder shrugs, and you'll hear a lot of things about them, but here's what we are under the impression or, or understand that shoulder shrugs indicate is when one shoulder goes up, that indicates the person isn't sure about their answer. Not that they're being deceptive. But it just says they're not sure about what that answer is. And I think he's afraid. He's, he's trying to make sure he's covering every base as he's thinking about that. I guess he, in his brain, maybe he's thinking, okay, I've got that covered. Let me see what else. Yeah, I got that. I think as he goes down this list, that's why we're seeing those things. Um, but throughout this, he still hasn't used that Kleenex for what you use them for. All right, we good? Mm-hmm. The eyewitness is you. What made you come out here tonight? Um, I went to... My mom's a late stage Alzheimer's patient. My dad's in the hospital. Um, my mom gets anxious when she does. I went to check on them and Maggie. Maggie's a dog lover. Okay. She fools with the dogs. And I knew she'd gone to the kennel. I was at the house. I left the house and went to my mom's <clears throat> for just a little while. Tried to call her when I left. <coughs> texted her no response um when i got back to the house the house was obviously nobody was in there so i figured they're still up here fooling around paul was um gonna be getting set up to plant our sunflower seeds got sprayed and died and he was refiguring to do to plant the sunflower seeds okay. so I came back up here and I drove up and saw 
and cold. <laughs> Had Maggie and Paul been arguing over anything? No. What was their relationship like? Wonderful. Wonderful. How about yours and Maggie's? Wonderful. I mean, I'm sure we had little things here and there, but we had a wonderful marriage, mm -hmm. wonderful relationship. In yours and Paul's relationship? As good as it could be. How old was Paul? 22. Okay. You know his date of birth? I do. April 11th, 96 is his brother's. April 14th, 99 is Paul's. Have y'all been having any problems out here? Trespassers, None people that I, breaking in? None that I know of. The only thing that what comes to my mind is my son Paul was in a boat wreck uh, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's been a, you know, he was charged with being uh, arrested for being the driver. There's been a lot of negative publicity about that. And there's been a lot of people online just really vile stuff but when Paul's out and about I mean people routinely I don't think I know the full story um, so I don't think they give it to me but I mean he's been punched and hit and just attacked a lot so you know but I mean nothing like this yeah All right, Chase what do you got there's some strange head movement here there's shaking and nodding mixed together, which you do not see in this culture. And I think this is confused on his part of which behavior to display. And you can confirm this confusion by the fact that he starts doing what I call intent checking. He's glancing repeatedly at the detective here in this instance to determine what kind of intent the detective has and the angle that he's taking with some of these questions. And when he offers the brother's birthday, April 11th, 96 is his brother's, April 14th, 99 is Paul's. This is a miniature resume statement here, and he's offering the details that suggest that he's a caring and good father. See, I know both of their birthdays, and I think he's doing that mostly unconsciously and when there's a question about the trespassers have y'all been having any problems out here trespassers people uh, breaking in the response to the question is an insertion of ambiguity into the case none that i know of the only thing that what comes to my mind is my son paul was in a boat wreck if i asked you if strangers come into your house often your answer would be no probably not I would say this is maybe uh, going on Mark's uh, scale. This like is that. maybe a volume 9 or an 8.5 on the 10 scale flag. There's an inability to identify a perpetrator. There is no concern to find out who did this at all. He wants to keep the net cast as wide as possible for what might have happened. And he still won't say murder. He skips over the murder every single possible time that it comes up. Every time here. Mark. Uh, yeah, so I love this one where he, where his his leg starts getting excited. It starts going up and down. Bit of the in and out as well there, Greg as well. But it, it's it's even more joyous around this idea of introducing the boat story because I think you know he's now laying down some some ideas of of you know potential uh, trouble that may lead to a perpetrator. And I think he looks off to his side there, not only to check intent, but to work out how's my story landing on this one. Is this one, is this one I should go a little bit further down that my, you know, my son may well have an enemy uh, out there. Oh, we also, this is off baseline as well. We also start to see uh, his hand uh, nearest to the driver, to the, to the officer, um, just becomes more active. And I hadn't seen his hand that active and that descriptive. So I think he's becoming quite excited and buoyant around how this story might work out from, for him. This is off uh, baseline for me. Uh, Scott, what you got on this one? All right, here's where he alludes to the murders being due to that boat accident. Paul was in a boat wreck. That's cold. When you're, you're trying to blame something on something your son did, 
that's that that says a lot about this guy, his personality type. And when he asked about the when he's asked about the relationship with his son in yours and Paul's relationship, as good as it could be. His head shakes and it turns no, and then it starts turning like Chase was saying to like a little bobblehead doll. So there's a lot going on there at that point as well. And that's probably true that the relationship is as is as good as it could be, you know, as it could possibly be. And that's because I don't they probably didn't get along very well. So it was as good as it could possibly be because maybe the the child didn't like him, maybe the wife didn't like him because he says the same thing about her as well, as good as it could possibly be. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so I couldn't pay a person to illustrate baseline better than this guy does. He's asked two questions about his relationship with his son and about his relationship with his wife. And in both instances, he says wonderful. But go back, watch his body language when he says wonderful. When he says wonderful about his son, it's pretty straight body language. Wonderful. When he says wonderful about his wife, now we know that they're estranged. Wonderful. He breaks eye contact, moves away to the side. His face changes. And he's entirely different when he's saying that. All this, we see a pattern. We see his baseline when he's comfortable. We see a deviation. And we get a chance to see two very different answers using the same English. If, if you think that body language is hokum, watch that. And tell me it's hokum. Tell me you can't see something that's going on. Two different messages, same words. When he gets down to the mechanics and he starts to tell that boat story, his thighs start moving. As Mark said, he starts to march in place with that one foot. And his blink rate increases. He does a left shoulder shrug again when he says nothing like this. Well, of course, nothing like this. Yeah, they hit him. They said bad things to him and never came out and killed him. That's all I got. The eyewitness is you. Had Maggie and Paul been arguing over anything? No. What was their relationship like? Wonderful. Wonderful. How about yours and Maggie's? Wonderful. I mean, I'm sure we had little things here and there, but we had a wonderful marriage, wonderful mm -hmm. relationship. And yours and Paul's relationship? As good as it could be. How old was Paul? 22. Okay. You know his date of birth? I do. April 11th, 96 is his brother's. April 14th, 99 is Paul's. Have y'all been having any problems out here? Trespassers, none people that I, breaking in? None that I know of. The only thing that what comes to my mind is my son Paul was in a boat wreck uh, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's been a, you know, he was charged with being uh, arrested for being the driver. There's been a lot of negative publicity about that. And there's been a lot of people online just really vile stuff but when paul's out and about i mean people routinely i don't think i know the full story um so i don't think they give it to me but i mean he's been punched and hit and just attacked a lot so you know but i mean nothing like this yeah <laughs> uh. so is there anybody that you can think of that we need to talk to tonight? Is there a name that comes to mind? I mean, I can't tell you anybody that I'm overly suspicious of <coughs> off the top of my head. Okay. You know, um, I mean, this is such a stupid thing. I'm even embarrassed to say it, but it just didn't make any sense. I just hired a guy out here mm -hmm. and he really he wasn't cutting the mustard, but I hadn't told him this yet. Paul's been working with him a lot. He killed the sunflower seeds in our dove field just recently, which is why Paul was here doing this. He told Paul a story the other day about how when he was in high school, he got in a fight with some black guys. And the FBI undercover team observed him fighting those guys and put him on an undercover team with three Navy SEALs and that their job was to kill radical Black Panthers. And they did that from Myrtle Beach to Savannah. Now, I really don't think this guy, you know, mm -hmm. is probably the person, but that's just so friggin'. Yeah, that's kind of far-fetched story. It's weird, but he was off today. 
Okay. He took his daddy to the doctor. What's his name? C.B. Rowe. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Right at the beginning of this clip, you can see him try to adjust himself to look more comfortable and more relaxed. The moment he does this, you're going to see his body completely disagree with him. It's going to move his hand back almost just without his consent to protect the groin and the femoral artery here. And do you know what other emotion that would be coming up here that's missing is anger. Anger would be present here. And just pay close attention to what is not being said here. And I think, in my opinion, you might hear a murderer talking if you just listen to what's not being said and what's being ignored. Greg? Yeah, there's no anger. There's no rush. There's no urgency. None of that. As a matter of fact, listen to the cadence of his storytelling slow down. Slow down. This is, what has it been, 30 minutes of him sitting in a car? I would be looking for help. He gives into you know. You know. You know. Mm -hmm. There's a new word, a new phrase he's injecting that indicates he's comfortable and thinking and talking. And that's his filler words starting to come out. It's not scrambled. It's not compressed. None of that's going on. There's more concern in the cop's brow and in the guy in the back seat than there is in his. This is his family. There's that zygomatic muscle again that we said makes your face want to smile. It sure looks like he's almost smiling when he's telling that story. Well, we know that earlier, what the study said was if your frontalis muscle was down in, in sadness and that, that was probably an indicator. He also starts to turtle. Chase, after he goes back and he gets forced into that position, then he shrinks a bit. And we say turtling, your head and your torso shrink and make your target smaller. This cadence is unlike anything else we've heard. I think it's because... He has already been rehearsing this story, and he knows what he's going to say. This guy who told me this story and, well, if, you, if you're trying to figure out who to point somebody to, then you'd have a lot of details. When I would just say, hey, there's a guy who works for me. He's a little shady. Maybe you want to go check him, if that were the case. I don't think that's the case. And this is the first time, the single first time, he's used his right hand to illustrate anything when he's talking about this guy. It's been at his groin, as I call it, protecting the precious this entire time. That's another red flag. Scott, what do you got? All right. Now he's trying to put the suspicion on somebody else. He brings in this other guy that, that worked for him, that he just hired, that isn't working out. And again, we're not seeing the emotions someone goes through as they relive this experience of what just happened, the most horrible things ever happened to him. We don't see that uncontrol uncontrollable sobbing, no wailing and crying, nothing. We don't even see one tear. And he has, and, and I've been looking, nothing. We don't see, he doesn't tear up. There's nothing in there. There's no tears at all. We don't see that detachment you'll see from when someone goes through something that bad. Why, uh, no, why did this happen? Going back to that. He should be distraught. This guy's not distraught. He sounds like he's talking about some things that, you know, like when we tell stories, it sounds like he's talking about something happened last week. Guess what happened last week? This. And then going through it, he just gives this list of, of things and never tears up. Doesn't use his, his Kleenex either. Nothing's looking the way it should look. I keep going back to that, but that's, I think that's the most important thing here. Nothing looks as it should look up to now. All right, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, this is a beautiful scene. You can't even write this stuff. It's, it's, it's genius. The, uh, the officer says, look, is there anybody that we should be looking at? So is there anybody we need to talk to tonight? Is there a name that comes to mind? And while he says that, he covers his mouth because he knows, I think, that he's looking at the perpetrator right now. So he's even blocking himself to the, to the lie of the question that he's asking there. This guy comes up with an amazing story. It's, it's a brilliant story whereby you've got a kid, high school kid, you know, gets in a fight, uh, FBI see him, they've got a whole bunch of Navy SEALs, and they go after the Black Panthers. And I love this line, they did that from Myrtle Beach to Savannah. It's just a great, I can, you know, I can just picture it in my head, the Navy SEALs and this high school kid, Myrtle Beach, <laughs> Myrtle Beach is fantastic. I just, all that rough stuff happening in Myrtle Beach. And then all the way down, to, I think they have to go through, through Charlotte or something like that, or Charleston or something, I don't know. I, I can't remember, Charles but 
Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm just picturing the scene there as well. The awful carnage. Hilton Head. <laughs> Hilton Head. <laughs> yeah. Awful carnage up and down the, the coast that's going on. So I mean what yeah. an amazing story. And the cop, again, like does a double take on it. Do, just does it <laughs> what the hell's what the hell's going on here? Uh, and, and and he does say, look, I'm embarrassed to say this. I'm even embarrassed to say it. But then he goes, um, yeah, I, I felt that story was a bit off, but he did take the day off today. Kind of far-fetched story. It's weird, but he was off today. Like, what a brilliant <laughs> equation. It's a nutty story. Obviously, it's utter nuts, but he did take the day off. So I think you should be looking at him. Just brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant logic. Love it. You don't know about the FBI Navy SEAL High School recruiter killer teams? No, no. <laughs> it's it's British no. Wars Club. It's everybody Wars everybody Club. knows that story in the US. That's like a classic all the way yeah. from, uh, from oh, yeah. Myrtle Beach to. Uh, I, no, because well, last time I was in Myrtle Beach, nobody boarded it up. So, uh, well, they, they have British. to sell cookies, I you think, can't to talk about or something. You know? We don't talk <laughs> yeah. about it. Oh, you're too British. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. That was a Girl Scouts. Somebody sells cookies. <laughs> right. I was in it, but they kicked me out for crying. The eyewitness is you. <laughs> so is there anybody that you can think of that we need to talk to tonight? Is there a name that comes to mind? I mean, I can't tell you anybody that I'm overly suspicious of <coughs> off the top of my head. Okay. You know, um, I mean, this is such a stupid thing. I'm even embarrassed to say it. But it just didn't make any sense. I just hired a guy out here, mm -hmm. and he really he wasn't cutting the mustard, but I hadn't told him this yet. Paul's been working with him a lot. He killed the sunflower seeds in our dove field just recently, which is why Paul was here doing this. He told Paul a story the other day about how when he was in high school, he got in a fight with some black guys. And the FBI undercover team observed him fighting those guys and put him on an undercover team with three Navy SEALs. And that their job was to kill radical Black Panthers. And they did that from Myrtle Beach to Savannah. Now, I really don't think this guy you know, mm -hmm. is probably the person, but that's just so friggin'. Yeah, that's kind of far fetched story. It's weird, but he was off today. Okay. He took his daddy to the doctor. What's his name? CB Rose. Hey,